Have you ever heard the expression, you don't know what you don't know? Uh, that usually comes with a pretty big aha once you see what's going on. And actually, I think that's happening in the world around us right now in a big way, and it's not quite so fun and amusing. What am I talking about? Actually, I'm talking about sexual brokenness, and I'm going to unpack that for you today. Thanks so much for watching um, my YouTube channel, and if this speaks to you, make sure that you check it out. Every Friday we have new episodes. My name is Mary Whitman Ortiz. I am a Christian sex educator and relationship coach, and I love to help couples to grow the intimacy in their marriage. So this is a big topic, and as I said, you don't know what you don't know. It's kind of staring us in the face. Let me give you some examples and see if you can follow me. The brokenness that I see in regards to sex, sexuality, um, I'm going to give you three categories, and we're going to hit the hard one first. So these are extreme levels of brokenness. And I see this in sexual abuse. I see it in human trafficking. I see it in pornography. You might not have thought to put those together, to link those ideas, but pornography is epidemic. It's happening to children younger and younger. It is just permeating our world. And so many images that we see in mainstream media at one time we would have considered r-rated and unacceptable so it's out there and we become numb to it we become desensitized when it's going on but it does permeate your thoughts and your choices and your relationships even if you are on the outside just being affected by it so what's another level of sexual brokenness? So I call this what's happening culturally. We have the idea of hookup sex, that that's just normal. I mean, every sitcom you watch, the couple meets, they go on a date, they have sex, and then the rest of the story unfolds. And that is just so far from God's original design. So it's already incorporating some things, just kind of weaving in some habits that make people feel used and not valued and appreciated. And then we have so many other issues going on right now. There's confusion about gender. There are reproductive rights that are being very divisive. That permeates our culture. It can cause people to have a chip on their shoulder, to be to stiffen up, to bristle, to forget what love really looks like. But now I'm going to hit closer to home. These are the dysfunctional areas where I see sexual brokenness. And this is a shame-filled mindset where maybe you wouldn't have used the word shame, but you would have used the word taboo. So many of my clients were not encouraged to talk about sex or to see it in a positive light from their childhood. And if they were, then um, usually their spouse wasn't. So there is instantly a place that they have to wrestle through. Also, there's a selfishness regards to sex because they don't understand the whole way that God invites us to participate. So if you don't have a spirit, soul, body, wholeness, oneness, connection type of motivation, then your sex life is going to be selfish. And when everything's spontaneous and all cylinders are running, you might not recognize it. But that is just not the way a lifelong marriage works and so many things can break down when selfishness is there and then on the other side of that dysfunctional brokenness I see sex without intimacy now usually when I talk about sexual intimacy I combine the words and I know a lot of this could be like but what are you really talking about Mary can't we just say sex well Sex only, in my thoughts, implies body only. It's just that 
physical act of sex. And that is never something that can be maintained. God calls us to a lifetime of enjoyment, which means we adapt to our spouse out of love, out of respect. And the intimacy is a part of that. The knowing, the being known and loved is the sweet spot of sexual intimacy. And when we don't have that, we are definitely walking in sexual brokenness. So what do you need? How can you change all that? You need to be a part of the sexual wholeness movement. Absolutely. And when you get this understanding, you will enjoy your sexual intimacy. It happens for you as a person, for you as a part of your marriage, your couple, and then you make a difference in the world by how you are representing that. What are those steps to become a part of the sexual wholeness movement? You open up the dialogue. I know it can be really tough when then there's been walls and pushback, but that begins the sexual wholeness movement. Number two, you need to identify the brokenness, how it's impacted you, how it has already started to derail you from your future goals. Once again, it may have been happening and you weren't even aware of it. Number three, be a voice. Be a voice for yourself. Be a voice in your marriage. You're going to steward this wholeness in your life and then begin to see how it can help others. That's going to include getting trained. And there's a lot of ways that you can make that happen. What happens if you don't get the facts about sexual wholeness? Well, you know, it just becomes normalized. This pattern continues and it's only going to get worse unless we invite God in and bring his light into this area of darkness. And that degrading and belittling, it hurts all humans and it just wrecks havoc. Nobody wants to live like that. But what happens when you do get a fresh understanding about sexual wholeness and you do become a voice? Well, there's more freedom, there's more joy, there's more closeness and confidence in this feeling of significance. It's a powerful, wonderful thing. And I invite you to become a part of the sexual wholeness movement. I'm hosting a training. And it's July 14th and 15th, uh, 2023. It's online. All the details will be in the links here. You know, it's open to anybody because you can be a voice for yourself, for your marriage. It's also open if you're in leadership. Are you a mental health professional? Are you a ministry leader? You need to know these facts. You need this sexual wholeness toolkit. Are you a director of a nonprofit that stands in the gap for people who haven't had a voice? You need to know this because it's evident, it's prevalent in our society, and we need to bring the change and we need to bring it now. So I'm looking forward to inviting you to the sexual wholeness movement. Get trained, and I will see you next time.